Oh, yes. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Is that going to fall off the table? Um, hopefully not. All right. <laughs> Put the, yeah, there you go. How's it going? Yeah, good. Want some water? Yeah, definitely. It's super Hold warm. On. Can you reach that glass? Um, not without knocking bad. it over. I'm going to get a glass. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. It's sparkling, though. Of course it would be. I hate sparkling. Whatever. Probably chose the like most scratched glass as well. Whatever. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Hey. What are you up to? Fashion week? You know, back in Copenhagen. First fashion week in a while. I know. It's weird. It's, it's so um, weird. Like being home for such a prolonged period of time, especially for you as well. Well, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's so weird. I'm just interested to see what the new format is going to be like, um, how this is going to go. So, yeah, it's really weird. Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of hope it'll be a little bit quiet just so we can kind of not have to hit the hit the road running. <laughs> like but ease into it. Well, yeah. I think definitely also because not many guests or even buyers or people from a lot of places will be yeah. able to travel in. So right. it'll probably be a lot of local people. Right. And, um, but that's fine. That keeps yeah. it more authentic anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I hope that we can get back to normal soon. But until then, this is... But that's where, the thing, what, what is normal. Yeah, I know. It's, I think that there are several things that have changed that will never go back to how it was. For sure. So even the amount of people at shows or stuff like that, people traveling or the way they travel, it's yeah. going to be, yeah. But I mean, how long have we been doing this for? Like, how long have you been doing Fashion Week for? Wow. So my first Fashion Week was 2008. 2008, before me? <laughs> yeah. But, but I was only doing London oh, at right. that point. Okay. My first New York was 2012, that. okay, which I, is when I met you. And I was 2011 in New York, which is yeah. my first. So, but it's changed so much from like yeah. quiet to crazy, and now back, back to like kind of kind of kind of quiet. quiet. We'll see, but yeah. yeah. But um, I mean, as far as like um, on the subject of representation and all these, yeah. you know, things have been coming up, especially in the states and yes. in the UK as well. Yeah. Um, I guess we can discuss like in the fashion field how yeah. how we've seen that change a little bit because yeah I mean over the years like it went from thanks man Thank appreciate you. that is that still water perfect so that's kind of like a subject that I wanted to touch base on yes. because it's something that in the past couple of years like yeah. people have become more aware of and like wanting to make sure that you know that there's not only diversity but uh diversity is like a not the word that i want to use but i think representation is yeah. a is a better term um because like w back in the day like when i started all of the models all of the models yeah. were like caucasians yes. or and then like the korean market and the chinese yeah. market kind of hit a boom yeah and then we'd see a lot of um you know asian models yeah. and things like that but now in the past what when, when when did um when did the article come out? It was Lauren who put that. Um, Lindsay. Lindsay. So that right, came sorry. out. Yeah, right. What we two thousand and it was three twenty twenty. It was about four years ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that article in the cut. And yeah. that kind of like stirred everything up. Yeah. And and nobody had really paid attention. Like it it had never been brought to the forefront. Like it had yeah. never been. I mean, probably because everyone it was they were just accustomed to it. That was right. the way it was. Right. And even people that spoke out about it. Um, it never reached like a major publication. Yeah, the mainstream. So basically. I feel that the problem with the fashion industry, it was very much a, let's put a band aid over this. Right. So it was very much okay. There's diversity. Okay, let's just put a few models in. Let's sprinkle this. Okay, we. It was very much tokenism. And fill our quotas, basically. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. Which is which is the problem. It's very much about let's do this now to make it look good, and right. then we can just continue as usual. Right. Whereas now it seems that a lot of people are like, okay, we're fed up of this. We're yeah. going to call this out. Right. We're going to do something. Right. Again, the problem is with that, you have people that will say, okay, we'll put a model on the cover or we'll right. put some people in our show, but within our actual structure, right. there isn't any change. Right. Which is where inclusive inclusivity comes right. in. Right. So if you don't have these people in your actual structure, right. nothing's going to change. You're still going to make the same mistakes. Right. You're still going to continue and you're not actually addressing the real problem. When you say structure, you mean like people working at the magazines, so, working in the production, working PR, at the show. Right, okay. Um, production, right. Um, designers, your design team, 
um, literally all the way through. Right. There needs to be representation. Yeah, and I mean, I think that when when that article came out, um, the, the my immediate response to it, I was confused because obviously, like from my perspective, like it didn't, I didn't realize it, like because yes. you know, you know what I mean, because it was the normal, it yeah. was the norm, right? And that's the thing. So and so, my my kind of argument at the time was. Okay, if, if there's a hundred people at the show, I mean, there at the time, all of the editors are white yeah. people or or Japanese or Chinese or yeah. what, there was no people of color, really, like very few as far as the ratio was concerned. Yeah. So, I feel like that's changed actually pretty yeah. drastically over the over the past couple of years. Like, I feel like there's a lot not it's not equal in any way, but yeah. it's it, there's a lot more uh, diversity in the in who's showing up to the shows as but, well. I, feel. I mean, influencers they, too. They are. I mean, but that's, again, it's down to if you're going to Fashion Week, yeah. you're going. My thing is you're going for a job. You should be working. Right. So the problem is if these companies don't have buyers of right. color, if they don't have editors of color. Right. And the brand is inviting editors and buyers. Right. You're not going to see these people represented. Right. If there's influencers out there and they don't, they think it doesn't fit with their brand or something. That's what I've heard so many times. You've had that's... many, you've had black influencers, and they'll reach out or they want to work with them, and they're very much like, "Oh no, you won't basically fit in, or you don't represent us." And it's it's actually really shocking. And they write a response like that, like I've, they say it. I've had right. I've had people that have worked on PR teams, and I've seen them say, "Hey, what about this person? We want to." work with them and they're like oh we don't think it will resonate with our audience or they don't fit our brand and it's just crazy I that can't people could yeah, people put that, yeah, in people put that. Wow. and i mean for me with the whole when that article came out i i was annoyed at it huh. be, be, because my thing was i will shoot everyone right, right, right. Like, and my thing is it was just frustrating that it wasn't being called out for the people who were seeing it as the norm or right. just carrying on and pushing this narrative. Right. If you're a, a young lady or a guy or anyone and you're looking at a magazine and you're seeing the most fashionable people and right. they only look a certain way, right. that's going to imprint on you. For sure. You and, see what I'm saying? Especially if they don't look like you. Exactly. And you can't really... That has an effect. And that's why street style like is was or is or whatever is yeah. so uh viable is because people can look at it and and think like okay that girl isn't a victoria's secret model yeah. like she's somebody who i could be yes right? exactly. so, that could be me so, so if there's if there's nobody that even looks remotely like you yeah. then then you don't get to have that interaction with the with the photo like yeah. you know i mean yeah i understand that if I mean, you yeah if you don't see your hair type you don't see right. your color you don't see somebody your size right. you always feel that you're excluded from right. that conversation. For sure. And that's the dangerous part about it. So we as photographers, we kind of control that narrative as well. Right. If we're only shooting one type of thing and we're saying these are the most fashionable people, these are the people we like to see, these are who we are representing. Right. And then the magazines are then pushing that or right. whichever e-commerce or publication, then that's, that's where it's dangerous. For sure. And I think that is something that has changed but we still have a long, a long way to, way to go. Yeah. But okay, here's here's mm. something that's interesting, like brands, like, like yes. creative directors of brands. I feel like that's been where the big change, there's been such a change with designers, like a larger amount of designers of color coming out with amazing talents. I mean, and even the appointment of Virgil yeah. at Vuitton, things like that. I, I mean, I feel like like it's getting better. It's it not is, there, but it's, but it's I mean, if we if we look at the, the, the scale, grand scheme exactly, things, if we look at the grand yeah, scheme, yeah, yeah, if we yeah. look at the scale of brands and and this is the other thing, it's always a kind of we're getting there. Give us time. It's for like, sure. How long has this been going no, on for? for sure. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, why is it now it's taken something as drastic, something like the world to be in a pandemic right. or things to be played out on your screen for you to suddenly now assess the industry and be like, oh, hey, we've dry, been... You dry off, buddy? Dude, I'm You are so dripping, hot. man. Oh. Here, let me get you a stack. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's just like, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, watching your, I'm watching you, you sweat like out You're getting here, like wetter and wetter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... <laughs> it's okay. That's the thing. It's very much a... We're giving you this and we're doing it slowly and it's taking right. time. I don't expect that suddenly a overnight, whole magazine is going to overnight right, change. Right. But it makes you realize the structure. If you've been going on like this for so long yeah, and been yeah. happy with it, yeah, yeah. then you realize how much, okay, this is what we, you need to now dismantle this and say, right. why were we so comfortable with this? But it's just capitalism. Why man. are we? Like, 
you know what I mean? Like it's this just like it's, it's a bunch of rich white people running around and controlling but being everything. comfortable. Yeah. And this is the other thing. There are a lot of people now who are having the conversation, but when they realize the changes that it has to make and it's actually going to affect them and yeah. there may be something taken away from them. Right. They're like, oh no. For like, sure. Yeah. I don't I, I don't know how much of a change I want to make. For sure. It's very much we'll make these, but if it affects me right. or my privilege right. or anything we don't want to do that yeah it's yeah yeah it's within a within a i overfilled that sorry um <laughs> it's within a comfortable a comfortable uh, amount yeah i i get that but i mean like seeing like the um the what's it, kenneth Ize or i don't know how to pronounce yeah. his last name but yeah. like he's an incredible designer yeah. receiving this award and having having this show in you know at paris fashion week yeah. was like with, with some with huge names in it as Naomi well Campbell. when i exactly yeah, walked exactly. in his show like, like it was and she did it to support him as well yeah. which is like which is massive but which like, is amazing but see these if these things should be more common we shouldn't standard. just be exactly yeah. celebrating a one-off i mean did you see um donna's cover i for haven't Vo like, no. like her cover Wait, for the what september is it? issue for um vogue <sighs> I feel like I've seen it. Wait, it's remind me. Like, um, so there was um, Adoa oh, in yeah. there, and then there were other people. Like, it's basically like an activist cover. Oh, yes, yes, was, yes, yes, yes. Her standing, and then yes, the guy standing. Right. Like, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's super so, nice. And this is the it's thing. Beautiful, it's, though. it's so good. Yeah, yeah. But this is the thing. There needs to be more of that, not mm. just the hey, it's Black History Month or right. something. We'll give you a cover. Right. We'll give, and in, not just um, like it needs to be representing token, everyone yeah. right, exactly. Right, right, right. Why not? If we have. If you're representing a worldwide audience, right. why shouldn't your staff represent every, everyone? For sure. But also, like, Donna's probably one of the best dressed women in the world. You see that? Don, sure. Donna is amazing. Like, her style is so good. Yeah. And her work. She's like one of the few well. people yeah. that we still, like, yeah. actually run after. <laughs> exactly. But she's like a rare one, too. She's right? very rare. But so she, I mean, that's a perfect example of, like, her being in her position, being able to, like, exactly. put this in front of people. And, like, if she wasn't there, maybe that cover wouldn't exist, exactly. right? Exactly. Like, um, but then the other thing is you have people wanting to do that cover right. but not being able to do it well because they can't tell the story right. i can't tell your story for you the mm. same way you can't for me so right. if we need we need people telling their narrative we need to for be sure. able to be controlling our stories you need um, black photographers you need makeup artists producers and i'm not saying they should only work on that right. i'm saying you need to have them included so that you can tell the story for sure accurately absolutely absolutely yeah, i mean i mean that's like talking with these talks that i did on the on the live Which stream was super cool Thanks. Like they were, I know, I'm, I mean, and this is the thing, I'm not just saying it to like blow smoke, whatever, yeah. <laughs> blow, blow away. No. No, it's a lot of people I've found are just saying things yeah. and they're protecting themselves. You have a large platform, you have an audience and you know that your audience may yeah. not be necessarily receptive to this for or sure. they may not expect this for you. And for you're sure. like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to use my platform. And I'm going to allow people to speak rather than controlling the narrative, which is very important. But also, I mean, to, to give credit where credit's due, like it wasn't my idea. It was Lauren, Lauren Culpepper, Culpepper yeah, yeah. Told, and I was like, whoa, I never thought of that. Like, and if she wouldn't have come to me to say that, it makes me sound like ridiculous. But like, I, I truly didn't think of it. And when she told me to do it, I was like, OK. And then she's like, yeah, but you should have people of all different statures, like like people with no followers, yes. like 400 followers. It's yeah. like people whose voice literally with the algorithm will never, will be, never be heard, heard yeah. and put them on there. And I mean, I didn't like my engagement was so so, but yeah. it was I still think it's important to do that. Yeah. And I mean, even if only a couple people see it and, you know, and, and it resonates the with them. Exactly. Yeah, it's I mean, it's effective. I mean, and that's the thing. You actually listen to Lauren. You could have just been like, oh, no, it's fine. I'll post a black square or like yeah, make a like donation and that's it i'll right. move on and carry on with my content for sure and the problem is a lot of people are like oh i don't want that to affect my my feed or yeah. this it's just like if that's where you're the most visible if that's where your voice is yeah, if yeah, you yeah. can reach someone use it I just and be just on the right side everything. of the history book anyway like just do do this do the is, right thing plus it's not like we're creating any new content these days anyway so exactly. i may as well i may as well do something do something good with uh, my stagnant instagram page like, as well it's literally like we're like what were you doing yeah. at this moment when sure. the world was on the brink of like changing and resetting almost, what were you doing yeah. like taking a yeah. bikini picture yeah. and posting it i didn't i didn't take any bikini pictures <laughs> but i could I was There's looking still time. forward to that There's yeah still time. But, <laughs> but it's it's very much it's and it's even for me it's even crazy that we are now in this day and age mm. actually talking about dismantling this system like why is it still in place why would people want to hold on to a system that is inherently racist like right. why, why would you support that i it's, it's crazy to me that 
people can actually make excuses or yeah. justify it in any way. I think ignorance is really easy for people to justify. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't think that I don't. I don't know, but I I feel like people just take the side of ignorance so that they can be like, oh well, okay, I didn't yeah. I didn't think of that, I didn't know, and then that's like a really easy excuse, I yeah. think, because if you, you know, I mean, I I genuinely feel like people's intentions, I want to feel like people's intentions are good, you know what I mean, like so, but you know, when when people take the ignorance card, like I used to be a little bit more sympathetic to it, yeah. but now it's just like, okay, well, just educate yourself. Like, and this is the thing, I yeah. I don't mind if you've never known. Right. the right thing or you've never right. understood but again with you you put yourself in an uncomfortable place it's like i don't know all the answers i'm yeah. going to listen to people yeah. and i want to learn to affect change and like, that's, that's what it's about and that's the thing and i learned a lot like hearing like sasha talking about like walking in backstage and like having yeah. to do her own hair because there was no girls there that no makeup artists there that yeah. could do her hair or her makeup or they'd yeah. have like nothing in their palette for foundation yeah. with her skin tone it's like, damn, I never thought of that. Like, it's, I mean, that's the thing that's crazy. I remember being in London at, mm -hmm. I won't say the name of the show, but backstage, and there was quite a huge model. Yeah. And she was sitting there literally just looking like she was about to cry. And I asked, like, no one was touching her. She was just sitting there and I asked her what was wrong. Um, and she was just like, no, like, no one's, I've been sitting here so long. The show's about to start. Everyone just comes over, kind of looks at me. And she's even overheard people saying, I don't want to touch her. Like she's oh. like, there's something wrong with her. It's just like, it's here. Yeah. Like literally, if you're, if this is your craft, yeah. you learn how to do For sure. all here. If it's makeup, you have different For ranges sure. in your palette. It's like you saying, you get to set and you're like, oh, I can't shoot them. They're too dark. I don't know how to light them. For sure. Figure it out. That would be crazy. Yeah, yeah. But Figure people it out. feel comfortable. I think they've been comfortable for so long saying yeah. these things like yeah. casting agents, um, photographers, makeup artists. And it's about examining yourself and actively now trying to make a change and, with whatever industry you're in. And to better yourself as an individual in exactly. order to be part of like the chain, right? Yeah. Like, cause you're not gonna, the chances of you being able to persuade or influence other people, it may exist, but I think that the responsibility stands primarily with with writing yourself, yourself and yeah. then thusly like leading by example and like yeah. maybe you're the hair and makeup artist who didn't know how to do this hair yeah. or this makeup and then you figure it out and then you can teach your team or teach your key artist or whatever exactly. so that that doesn't become an issue and then you can even market that to or where like even bring people on board if you know yeah, there's a um, black sure. hairstylist or yeah. a black makeup artist bring them on your team sure. and then you can and then you won't I'm not saying all your problems will magically disappear, no. but it's a step in the right direction. Absolutely. If you're building a house, you don't, you know, you have a plumber come in and do the plumbing. Yeah, you, know, you, you don't, don't do everything. You don't have yeah. the guy putting the sheetrock up doing the plumbing. You know, you have like, exactly. Yeah. So, but has anything like, as, as a photographer, like, mm -hmm. I know like being on the street is stressful, like going backstage as well. Like, is there anything yeah. that you've run into uh, personally at Fashion Week that has been an issue? I mean, for me, it's very much been... I'm going to eat my croissant, sorry. Go for it. Um, I thought you were going to put that all in at once. Mm. <laughs> so, I have I mean, I've had situations where I've turned up either to a backstage. Mm. I, I remember this. It was in um, Paris. And I had the credentials and everything. You had and, the actual badge? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, literally. I'd, and they was, they was some... First of all, the security guard just wasn't even listening to me. Um, and then, like... Okay, can I speak to the PR? And then they'll see it and they're like, oh, actually, no, you're not supposed to be here. I'm like, what are you talking about? I've been given access and I'm just like, I'm here. I would like to shoot. I've come to cover this and have to argue to get there. And then being there and then I remember shooting and then being told that I had to leave. Okay, just, just like Just me. And I remember oh, right. this because I remember there was another photographer there and he was even like, what's happening? I'm like, I'm being told to leave. I haven't done anything. Everyone else is still shooting. Yeah. I'm just like, and the worst part is in these situations, you start to second guess yourself and say, oh, maybe there's a reason or you try to justify it because you've had to deal with so many of these things. And even when you speak to people and you mention it, they're like, oh, why are you always making everything a race issue? Right. Why is it always about color? And it's right. just like, well, I'm not. I can blatantly see this. This right. is happening because of like my, the color of my skin. Right. And it's such a, it's a difficult thing to deal with over and over where you're like there is nothing else that i've done or nothing else that i've said and just because of your bias now i'm having to deal with this right so um i mean 
on the street, it's, I mean, the good thing about, I think, being on the street is the photographers, we kind of have a camaraderie, like right. even within our group, like mm. there's people of all nationalities. I've mm. never felt as in, oh, hey, you can't be with us because right. of this. And, I'm, and I've had actually you and um, Jonathan, like stand up for me when there's been situations where it's just blatant. It's so blatant. Mm. It's not just me. People of other color have been like, okay, yeah, you're being treated unfairly. Right. So we're going to join. And I think that's what it takes. It's very much not just like, oh, that's your problem. Right. You deal with it. Right. I'm not black. It's very right. much, no, you're our friend. We're yeah. together in mm. this. We, we don't. We're not being treated that way, but we're right. not going to stand back and let you be treated. Yeah, like that time that with the police officers. The on police the, officer yeah. outside Grand Palais. It was, I was standing, I remember, in the street. <sighs> like the one step way, off one of the step, curb. One step off and the so curb. And so was I. Yeah, you were there. Yeah. I'm trying to remember I think who it was else Nabil. was there. Nabil. Nabil was there. Um, Jonathan. Some, and a few others. Everybody was there. And the policeman literally just like told me to get off and I was literally, I'm by the curb yeah. and then grabbed me or like shoved me yeah. to the side. And we're standing in the street. Standing like, right uh, there. We're doing the same thing yeah. that he is. Why aren't we? Exactly. Yeah. And that's what you said to him. You were like, wait, we're both in the street. Why are you not harassing? He's like, no. And you're like, I'm going to arrest him. I was just like, are you serious? Yeah. It was, it's just crazy how people are so comfortable right. in that bias. Right. And it's, um, yeah, with, with the, with photography, it's just always like, I'm just here to work. For I'm sure. just like, why am I now being like treated this way right. just because of your bias? Right. It's like, yeah, it's that's it, wild. It can, yeah, it can be a disheartening, especially in this day and age. Right. It's just, and it's, I don't know. It's also when you have to deal with things in your personal life, and then have to come and deal with it at work, and right. then you're expected just to carry on and smile, right. and you can't pretend like nothing's happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because if you think about it, this is our workspace. Right. I can't then suddenly like get angry and want to react because then I'm I'm the angry black man. Right. Or like I'm the one that's instigating. I'm aggressive. Right. right. That, that's always the narrative that's right. told, even if I'm reacting or dealing with the situation. Exactly. Right, right, I'm right. the I'm the aggressor. That stigma. Yeah. Of, right, right, right. Exactly. Whereas yeah. I feel even in workplaces, like somebody can come in and be like going off about their coffee. Yeah, yeah. Or that they somebody pushed them on the train. Right. And if I come in and I have a like a moment just to be right. human which right. is a human emotion right it's like oh you're aggressive i'm scared yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, um i mean yeah. like with, with those cops on the street like i guarantee you if i if it was me getting pushed and I, I like pushed back like yeah. i probably wouldn't have gotten you, arrested it, exactly. i probably could have you know whereas yeah i know i it's so bizarre i mean it's something that i just can't really understand yeah. obviously because i'm not on the other side of it yeah. but you know from the little things that i've you know from that specific example it's it's just a bizarre circumstance that that yeah, yeah i just i don't know you can only look at it from the other side yeah. and like and just be like whoa and not even you know not even having really like thought of it before because yeah. it's just not happening to me and that's you know the thing I mean? it's just things that will never and and this is the thing that i say to people to friends i have there are some things you will never have to consider you never have to worry about you can literally leave your house go about your day do right. this i have to be I'm not even just I'm not making it about myself, but right. other people have to think of certain things. Totally. It's like you have to always, even even with traveling, yeah. I have to think, a lot of people can like pick up and go anywhere. I've actually messaged friends before and be like, hey, have you been here before? Like, yeah. is it a racist place? Yeah. Like, how many black people are there? Like, sure. literally, before you even think of traveling somewhere, you yeah. have to think of how you're going to be treated For sure. when you're there. Yeah. Which is, which is crazy that like, you should have to think about that. But so okay, so we're in Copenhagen. So like, yes. and you you were telling me at dinner last night that yeah. Copenhagen is you've had, you've had a good I've experience. Had, yeah, I've never. I mean, I've again last year. I've was my first time in Copenhagen. Right. I've always heard how nice it was and everything. Yeah. And you are. All, I mean, you're always apprehensive when like sure. Copenhagen, from what you think is very Caucasian, you don't sure. really think of it as a multicultural place. Right. But when I've been here, I've been. I mean. I've been fine. Like right. I've never had any problems here. Right. I mean, again, this is my experience. Right. Like I can't speak for anyone else who right. lives here for or sure. any people that have traveled here, right. but it, it, it is, it's nice to go somewhere and to be like, okay, I'm not saying everything's perfect right. because like I don't live here, but yeah. it's like comfortable. I've never had to worry about when I go to shows, being treated a certain way when I'm walking around. So it is, it refreshing. is refreshing. Yeah, yeah it is refreshing. Sure. Like, yeah. can you imagine? Like, you're that's that's what you that's you would, what you measure a place by. For sure, absolutely. Yeah, 
let's hope let's hope this season will be uh, yeah. the same. Let's hope we haven't jinxed ourselves. Can you imagine, or like, like, like literally like, leaving the first today, show yeah. and just like, yeah, oh man. Anyway. Oh man. <laughs> cool. Um, should we go to some shows? Let's do it. Let's do some do you work. Go check into your room first. Yeah, you got your suitcase. Might, yeah, put my stuff down. And All right. Check it out. Yeah. Cool. All Definitely. right. Let's go. Easy. Thanks for talking to me. No, of course. You dropped some. Thank you. Let me throw that oh, out. Yeah, but no, that's good. <laughs> cool. Let's go. I gotta check in too. Where's the check-in? There? Right here. Yeah, okay. I should probably check. Oh, I left my wallet back there. I left all my stuff. That's not very good. <laughs> Let me go get my stuff. Hold on. We didn't pay for the coffee. <laughs> didn't oh, wow. pay for coffee. Left all your stuff. On the house. <laughs> okay, cool. 